It happened one Christmas Eve, around about ten years ago. I was a single woman, living alone at the time. I returned home from work to see a present in my mailbox. It looked really pretty. The ribbon and the paper were gorgeous. It was expertly wrapped, too. I had no idea who the sender could be. There was no gift tag or card. I guessed that I must have a secret admirer. And that was a really exciting feeling for me. I could hardly wait. I tore the wrapping paper open, eager to see what was inside. Inside there was a beautiful blue scarf and a pink envelope. I quickly opened the envelope. I wanted to know who the gift was from. There was a letter. It was written on beautiful paper. It was all cute and very romantic. The content of the letter was pretty long, but let me give you the gist of it. Or should I say, the only parts that I can remember. I haven't spoken to you yet, but I've always liked you. Actually, I knitted this scarf for you. And I really hope you like it because I really like you, Emily. I would be really happy to see you wear it sometime. I felt dejected. It was such a shame because my name isn't Emily. The gift wasn't meant for me. The sender must have gotten the wrong house. I won't lie, I was disappointed. I was already creating the plot to a romantic comedy in my mind, starring me and the mysterious gift sender, until I got dealt that blow. I had the problem now of what to do with the Christmas gift for Emily. I didn't know any Emilys in the area, so I figured the best thing I could do would be to hand it into the nearest police station, so that maybe the sender, or Emily, could one day get their gift. I didn't have much choice, I didn't want to keep it. Emily could take the leading role in my rom-com. I'm used to being the supporting character anyway. I handed it in on the way to work the following morning. The policeman looked a little weirded out, but he accepted it as a lost and found item. I went home later that night. Yeah, I worked on Christmas Day, it's not that uncommon here. Anyway, I went home and I checked the mail, just as I always do, and I found a brown envelope in my post box. It was unstamped, so that meant that it must have been hand delivered. Interesting. I opened the letter, and there was a note. There were only a couple of words written angrily on a piece of standard paper. It was in stark contrast to the present I opened on Christmas Eve. Actually, maybe I shouldn't have opened that a day early. <laughs> Anyways, the short message in the envelope read, Give it back. I was weirded out by that. It seemed pretty aggressive. I thought about the situation, and I decided to put a note up on my mailbox to put an end to whatever was going on. The misidentification of me for Emily and the anger that appeared to be in the second letter I received. So I wrote, I'm so sorry, but I accidentally opened the present you wanted to give to Emily. I handed your present in at the police station. I went to see if I had a response in the morning, and I saw that the note pinned to the mailbox had been angrily torn off. Something about that was a little jarring. The guy went from extra nice to angry and demanding. It just made me think, stay safe, Emily. I went Christmas shopping last year, and the mall I go to offers a gift wrapping service. Basically, you hand over your gifts, and you are given a ticket, and then you give them a bit of time to wrap your presents, and then you come back later and exchange your ticket for your wrapped gifts. It's kind of like taking a ticket at the deli, or a lottery number. You need to make sure you hang on to that ticket to get the presents back. I'm sure you're familiar with what I'm trying to say. So, while I was in line to collect my presents, I had my ticket in my hand and I was scrolling through something or other on my phone. I wasn't really paying attention. Suddenly, I felt a tug to my hand and I felt something brush past me. I looked and saw that my ticket had been stolen. Nothing like that had ever happened to me before. I screamed and I started to cry. I'm a bit dramatic. 
I felt terrible. I felt sorry for myself because I'm a mother with two Christmas-loving elementary school children. I was absolutely devastated. I saw a child running off with my ticket. I was shocked to hear him celebrating and shouting to his mother, I got it, I got it! I couldn't do much as they both turned and ran. I stood there, totally dejected, thinking about the look I had seen on the boy's mother's face. She didn't reprimand the boy. She didn't tell him to stop and give it back. I guess she was used to it. Thankfully, one of the clerks in the mall saw the whole thing. The number on the ticket wasn't that difficult to remember either. I still remember it, 2527. And of course, when they ran it through the system, they found my name against the number. I even had the receipts of all my purchases to back up my claim, so I was really lucky. I can imagine others in my position could have been worse off, and I find that so terrible to think of at Christmas time. In the end, there wasn't an issue for me. I don't know if the parent and the child returned later to attempt to claim the gifts, but I have had some time to think about it. I think that the child couldn't get what he wanted unless he stole it. Maybe he was encouraged to steal what he wanted by his mum. If that's the case, then that's just sad. It's an event that makes me more sad than angry. In my hometown, it always snows. We have a lot of open fields and forests. It's really picturesque. When I was younger, back in my high school days, I was playing out in the snow in a forest with a friend. The forest leads to a small mountain that we used for skiing practice and field trips at school. There are a lot of dead and fallen trees, and there's a gentle slope. We were burying one another in the snow. Have you ever been buried in the snow? You'll know that it's pretty damn hard to get out of the snow. It's a really dumb thing to do too, so please don't try it. My friend had buried me up to my waist, and I couldn't get out of the snow by myself. Even with my friend's help, I couldn't get out. It was very worrying and stressful, so I needed some additional help. It was pretty scary and cold, but I knew all I had to do was remain calm. My friend lived close by, where we were playing so he went to get a rope. About 10 minutes went by and my friend still wasn't back. I knew it would take about 10 to 15 minutes for him to get to his house and then back to me. I had no choice to wait and think warm thoughts. I stared blankly into the snowy landscape. I noticed something in the distance about 10 meters away. Something under the snow was bulging. I watched with interest. I saw something begin to emerge from the snow. Some kind of black mass broke free from the snow. A jet black, thin limb jutted forth and then searched for stable ground. It was about a meter long. Another limb came forth and then the rest of the black mass hoisted itself out of the snow. I got a good look at the thing. It was covered in thick hair. It shifted around restlessly and then I felt as if it looked my way. It was human-like in a way. It wasn't very big, no bigger than about three foot or so, and it moved on all fours. Its forelimbs were long and thin, and its back legs were shorter. I couldn't see its face because of all the hair that covered it. I have never seen anything like that in nature before, or since, and when I first laid eyes on it, after it broke out of the snow, shivers ran up my spine not just because I was buried in the snow. When it noticed me, it appeared to move towards me. It wasn't quick though. I think it could have had an injury, and if it did, then that really worked out for me. But even though it was hurt, it was moving my way, and it was horrifying. I wanted to scream or shout, but I couldn't. I couldn't move anything below my waist either. In my own childlike innocence, I believed that 
The only way I could defend myself would be to throw snowballs at it. I knew that wouldn't do much though, but that's all I had. The creature had closed the gap between us to about four or five meters. I needed to do something. I didn't know what though. I heard myself shout, hey, really loudly. I heard my friend shout back from a little further away. I looked in the direction his voice came from, and when I looked back, the creature was gone. I guessed that it could have buried itself in the snow again. My friend came back with his older brother, and before I knew it, I was hoisted out of the snow. Once out, and while regaining the use of my legs, I told my friend and his brother about what I saw. They didn't believe me, but I persisted. I went in search of the entry point that thing came from, and I discovered something. Something to back up my claims. There was a mass of black, spindly hairs lying there in the snow. My friend picked up a few strands of the hair. I could tell he believed me when he saw that. After that, we never went back to that mountain again. Nobody we asked had ever seen anything like that creature that I had. It was another lonely Christmas. I feel like I'm always alone this time of year. I don't have a girlfriend and I don't really have any friends who live close by. Since it was Christmas, I thought, why not go out and get a drink? I didn't really want to sit in a bar alone by myself, so I decided to drive to a speciality liquor store to get myself a couple of bottles of something special. It took a while to get there, and since it was winter, it got dark pretty quickly. I was out on the dark roads alone. I didn't see any other cars. People had plans for the holidays, I guessed. I took the mountainous roads on the way back from the store. I thought, why not? I had plenty of time. I thought it would be pretty nice to take in the views on the quiet roads. I thought that I might even have a chance to see some wildlife. I knew that deer and wild boars lived in these mountains. I pulled over and took a break. I sat in my car with the heating on thinking about life and wishing. I got out of my car after a while because I wanted to see if I could see the stars. I was walking around a little and I found a little rocky outcrop to sit on. I sat there for a while and then a piece of paper carried by the wind landed at my feet. This wasn't uncommon. Often in the mountains you can find scraps of paper, trash and pieces of clothing. For some reason that night I bent over and picked up the piece of paper. I don't know why, maybe because it was Christmas and I was bored. <laughs> there was something written on the paper and it read, Hey, you free tonight? <laughs> some message written by some kid probably passed to someone they liked in a classroom somewhere. You know, like a love letter or something. Well, that's what I thought anyway. I read it again and smiled to myself and said out loud, Well, I am alone at Christmas, so, yeah? That was a mistake on my part. You'll find out why shortly. I heard before that if you ditch garbage out in the mountains, something out there can make use of it. The rules are different out there in the wilderness. After a smoke, I decided to head out. I felt a little reluctant to leave somehow. I sat there in the car, and I went to start the ignition, but it didn't start. I was talking to myself again and I was saying stuff like, give me a break and, oh, I need this, don't I? Come on. I kept trying the ignition, but it wouldn't start. No matter what I did, I couldn't get my goddamn car to start. I was looking at the prospect of spending the night on the mountain pass, or at least waiting for a car to pass by so that I could flag it down. No cars passed. Of course no one would be dumb enough to be out driving in the mountains on Christmas night. I got out of the car to have another smoke, completely dejected, and that was when a thought occurred to me. The piece of paper carried by the winds arrived at the forefront of my mind. I said aloud, without much thought, actually, I'm not free tonight. I guess I kind of muttered it. I tried my ignition, and my car started instantly. Back in business, finally. 
I paused for a second and said, Oh yeah, I'm sorry. I gotta go. And then I headed off. It just felt right to say that, you know? I left with the feeling that I was in some sort of argument with something I couldn't see. Anyways, I drove for about an hour. Yeah, the liquor store was that far away. And then when I arrived at some kind of tourist area, my car spluttered to a stop. This was just what I needed. I thought that I would pull over and take a drink and a smoke and try to figure out what my next plan of action would be. I stood by a vending machine, grateful of the light in the dark shadow of the mountains. I put some change in the machine and picked out my drink, but it wouldn't come out. Then, as if to laugh at my plight, the wind picked up and carried this howling sound all around me. I didn't like the situation I was in, so I knocked on a nearby door. I stood there for a while in front of the house, but no one came to the door. I started to get a little worried about how I was going to get home. I went back to my car and grabbed one of the bottles of booze I brought at the store and had a drink. I went back to the vending machine to see if I could use its light to read a map that I had. I said aloud for some reason, after a couple of swigs of my booze, oh, you should have a drink too. I went back to the car and started the engine. I know that was really bad of me and I don't make a habit of anything like that, but I thought that my car had broken down and that's why I drank. But when I tried the engine again, my car started perfectly fine. I was really happy, but a little perplexed. Anyway, I drove home without any more troubles, car, or otherwise. I drank again when I was home. I carried on with the bottle. I cracked by the side of the road. Once I drained that bad boy, I went out to the car to get the other one, but it was missing. I was then reminded of the words I said aloud, out there in the elements facing the dark mountains. I think I had a conversation with something out there, and I'm sure that note started it all. Hey, I can't be that mad, right? Christmas is about spending time with someone, right? At least I wasn't lonely that night, but I was a little scared though. It was a weird experience. <laughs>